Welcome to the Oddity Shop, where the bizarre is always on sale. That's the grudge. Okay, what the fuck are we doing? The grudge. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Oddity Shop. I am one of your two lovely hosts, sitting here with Kara, who's trying to collect herself because she spent the last 30 seconds making the grudge noise. (laughs) Oh, my God. We're going to make sure it's in here so you all have to endure. Yeah, if I have to endure it, you all do, too. Um, other than making hideous sounds, what the hell is... I actually, wait. Before I even ask what the hell is new with you. <laughs> congratulations. <gasps> congratulations to you. Congratulations to you. And for everyone who doesn't know... For what us, the hell to we're us. congratulating each other for? As of last week, we have been officially podcasters for a year. Somehow, we have not even skipped a week. We have brought episodes every Thursday mm-hmm. and some extras. For a whole year, and I didn't even know I could be this consistent. Yeah, and we did it through COVID. When I had it, we did it through you being sick. We did it through multiple vacations, family issues, drama, work. I'm proud of us. What the hell? What the hell? I'm proud too. What the hell? How did I don't? Know. It feels like we should have missed multiple. <laughs> I days. know. Now we just have to keep it going for like the next rest of our lives. Yeah. 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 Okay. We'll try. Also, one other thing, because I forgot to say it, in case anybody doesn't know, this is the podcast where we tell you weird, creepy, odd, paranormal, occult, cult, and other things, stories from around the world. Okay. Now. I don't I don't know what's, what's new. new. <laughs> okay. No well, idea. good, because I can just keep talking. Okay, go. Dude, so I saw a movie that I think you're either going to love it or hate it, and it is mm. it's a campy horror movie. But it's like kind of got a good twist. It's called Totally Killer. Have you heard of it yet? Yeah, I meant to watch it. Was it good? It was exactly what you'd expect. Wait, is that the one that has Kieran and Shipka in it? Is that Sabrina? Yeah. 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 And I actually, you know, I, I did not like her in Sabrina. I really liked her in this movie. You're going to need to give Sabrina another chance. But it's like, it's not like horror movie ask, but it's like, you know, campy yeah. slasher movie. But. You, I, I think you'll actually really like it. Yeah, I love her, so it was on my list, actually. When did you watch that? Today? No, I watched it um, last weekend. I was over at Nick Nick's parents' house. Oh. Uh, we got together with his whole family for his birthday. And you didn't tell me until now? I'm sorry. I didn't think I had to until now. <laughs> All right. What about you? Oh, it's Denise's birthday today, even though when this comes out, it's not her birthday. But happy birthday, Denise. <laughs> happy belated birthday, mother. <laughs> I think that's it. All right. Oh, but speaking of Sabrina, I saw that you sent her um, Salem, a meme of Salem for her birthday. Yes. The cat. And then I was like, ooh, that's a good one. And then I found one of him eating cake and I was like, I'll send him that one too. I actually did talk to her earlier today and I was like, yeah, we definitely planned that. You know, I was like, it could also be your little familiar David. It, that's what I was thinking when you posted. It. I was like, oh, it's David. So cute. Okay. Okay. I don't have much either. Let's just jump in. Do you have a question for me? I like how you said you have you didn't have much, which you're the only one that's been talking. I know. But that's all I got. What's a family tradition that you have that like you love or it's like your favorite thing? So I think this kind of counts as a tradition, but like, okay, so you know Thanksgiving, like everybody has turkey, right? Or Easter, yeah. like most people get a ham and stuff. Like there's like the typical yeah. meal that goes with each of the which is so strange to me right but yeah like the turkey makes sense but like why is easter ham and whatever so my family always does like all of the whatever the, like the typical food is but we always have the same polish spread mm-hmm. for every holiday so thanksgiving we'll have a turkey but we'll also have sauerkraut and kielbasa or like christmas we'll have you know your typical oh, christmas stuff but we always like there's always like the really comfort Polish foods mixed in no matter what holiday it is. That's a tradition. Yeah. Yeah. Cute. I don't have any. <laughs> <laughs> not one? No, I don't think we do. I'm not even kidding you. When I wrote this question down to ask you, I was like, hope he doesn't ask me. <laughs> I, I have one other that is, you know what? I'm putting it on the podcast. So it is one that's haunted me for years and years. 
Like literally haunted? Not haunted, um, but I get made fun of every (laughs) Christmas. So when I was a kid, you know, like that air dry Play-Doh, but it's like clay, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I know what you're talking about. Mom had bought a bunch of that for us to make ornaments. So I made my dad an ornament oh, for yeah, yeah. Christmas. And it was supposed to be Snoopy's doghouse. Oh, God. But it doesn't really look like that at all. Oh, my God. So I, I gave it to my this. dad for Christmas and he opened it and he's like, oh, you know, thank you. And Wait, how old were you? Oh, I was I'm 10 or less. And the, okay, this yeah. ornament is still in existence. I need a picture of this. I, I don't know who in the family started it, but one of them said it kind of looks like a vagina more than it does Snoopy's doghouse. Oh, no. What? How? So now we have a fight every year about who gets to hang the Christmas vagina. That's hilarious. I need a picture of this. And every year I, they, you know, I have to defend that it was Snoopy's doghouse and not, in fact, a vagina ornament that I made as a, you know, young child. I can't even understand how that I was not a good artist. And Clearly. let's just say the colors aren't anatomically correct. <laughs> oh my god, ew. Uh, okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Now that everyone's sufficiently scarred. Oh my god. All right. Well, <laughs> I like that tradition, though. Are you ready? I'm ready. Thanksgiving. A time for family, food, fights, or ghost stories. Are you saying food fights? Well, possibly. I'm sure some families have had both. <laughs> <laughs> At least that's how Thanksgiving went for Bill and Frank Watson. Their grandfather always told ghost stories to the family at Thanksgiving. Family gatherings are stressful, so this sounds really amazing. Oh, God. Wouldn't you like that? What, for f- holidays to be stressful and then had to fight? No, I said they are stressful. Wouldn't Did you miss my whole intro? Should I backtrack? I thought I heard it. Yeah, why don't you say it again? <laughs> <laughs> Thanksgiving, a time for family, food, fights, or ghost stories. At least yeah. that's how Thanksgiving went for Bill and Frank Watson. I did hear it right. You said how that's nice. Who wants fights and hauntings? No, the ghost stories, you dumbass. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I'm down for the ghost stories. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, get to the story. <sighs> One Thanksgiving, as the brothers were called, the family was sitting around on the porch listening to a new ghostly tale. Gramps tells the story as follows. According to a local legend, a man walking home from a tavern claimed to see mysterious green figures dancing in the mist. He runs home to his wife to declare that he wasn't drinking whiskey and tells her, I saw with my own eyes the ghosts of the Irishmen who died with cholera a month ago dancing around the big trench where they were buried. It's true. It was awful. The story of the glowing men dancing in the woods had spread and others had also witnessed what they discovered, or described, I'm sorry, as ghostly green and blue Irishmen dancing on their graves. Others were said to see strange glowing lights floating near the area. This went on for decades and locals believed Duffy's cut to be haunted. What a topic for Thanksgiving. Dead people dancing. I'm I'm here for it. Uh where I know, right? Where is Duffy's cut? We're gonna get there. Okay. I'm excited because I was like, ooh, I hope you don't nobody like knows this. I've one. never I, at least it's not ringing any bells as of yet. Okay. Like our tavern goer stated, these undead were supposed to be in the ground because of a cholera outbreak. Now, dancing dead is wonderful legend, if you ask me. But what do we know about legends? They usually fake. Well, they just started from somewhere. Right. Or they're fake. (laughs) Or a mix of both. Right. (laughs) Okay. Philip Duffy was a labor contractor. The job was to construct Mile 59 of the Philadelphia and Columbia Railroad. This had eventually formed Duffy's Cut, which was what we're talking about. So basically, he oversees the construction but he gets it to be named after him, which I think is kind of bogus, if you ask me. I mean, he oversaw it. Who else is going to name it? <sighs> Probably the people that actually did the work. No, oh, well, the workers never get the credit. So is the top brass. That's what I'm saying. It's baloney. Anyway, so the Pennsylvania Canal Commission was created to oversee construction of the main line of public works. So this was projected to cut travel time between Philadelphia and Pittsburgh from weeks to days. 
So just this mile 59 was literally supposed to save them weeks of travel and just cut down to days, which is so crazy when you think about it that way. That is wild. So the commission approved construction of two rail lines, PNC, and I think it's Algany, Algany Portage. Sure. We're going to go with that. And Duffy, Duffy's contract for mile 59. Are you trying to say Allegheny? Thank you. I pronounced it right earlier when I was practicing and I can't do it again. You you know I've always got you. Okay. So Duffy's contract for mile 59 turned out to be like the second of his six contracts that he would have with the PNC Railroad. So he'd be making bank. Oh, he's rolling. Just overseeing. So Duffy had nine Irish laborers that he had already worked with on mile nine of the Westchester Railroad. But nine is not going to do for the amount of work that this 59 mile is going to be. So Duffy originated from Ireland and he used that to his advantage. He was able to solicit cheap labor from his homeland, which is really sad because like you should know. Right. Why are we like mm, you're kind of exploiting your own heritage people. Mm hmm. So the crew arrived to Philly from Derry. Is it Dongal, Ireland? Dongal? Dongal? Oh, I, I, Dungal. I got you on the, the American names. So it's, okay, so Derry, Dongal, and Tyrone, Ireland. Real quick side note. Have you ever seen, like, some of the um, Dungal. Gaelic Dungal. <laughs> Irish names and how they're spelt and how they're pronounced? I know, that's why. I know Ty- it's, it is Tyrone, because I heard somebody saying it, but I forgot to look up. And I know it's Derry. Derry. <laughs> if anybody knows the, how to pronounce it, let us know in the comments. Yeah, thanks. We're not making fun. I think it's cool. I <laughs> wish I had an accent. <laughs> All right. Now, I'm sure you can imagine that coming to America to hard labor is only because you absolutely have to. Like, nobody is just wanting <laughs> to do this. Um, and at the time, Irish Catholics were considered the lowest on the socioeconomic scale. So it's only because they have to. Yeah, they're the cheap labor. Do you're making a face like, a, what did I do? I was going to make a pun a while back and I've been holding it in and now it's too late. And it, it was just really bad <laughs> anyway. I've just been chuckling at myself. <laughs> okay, because I'm like, what did I do? Did I say something else wrong? You said he was... Okay, it's, it was minutes ago. You said he was rolling in it. I, had, I was thinking to myself, well, if he's like a railroad guy, maybe he's railing in it. And I'm like, that's not even funny. <gasps> but I've been laughing at my own head. Wait, that kind of was funny. <laughs> that is funny. Okay, anyway. So... <laughs> You could tell we haven't recorded in a minute. Uh, This was a dangerous and obviously hard labor job, like we just kind of went over. They had to work through densely wooded hills and ravines, through valleys. The work required to cut through limestone. Weather conditions did not stop a work day. I mean, like, you name it, it is what it is. It was actually kind of, like, described as a valley that they had to cut through to make this. And it's kind of why it became Duffy's Cut, because, like, a cut through. So it was basically backbreaking extensive work most of the crew averaged 22 years old in age which can you imagine leaving your family i'd much rather be doing like painstaking labor at 22 than 35 no i mean i guess i i don't mean that i just mean that you're that young and you just gotta be like bye i'll probably never see you again yeah that's so sad it is it was said that at least 47 men, and it, it ranges from like only one woman or maybe three women, but I, I'm going to go with 47 men and one woman came from Ireland in addition to the nine crew members Duffy already enlisted. After three months of travel at sea, the crew arrived in June to start their new life, if you can even call it that. Can you imagine three months to even get there to start working? Um... Okay, so you know me, though. I love boats, so like three months on a boat sounds great. But in that time, no, thank you. That's what I mean. We are, this is, uh uh-uh. Sounds like scurvy. Well, cholera. Oh, or cholera. (laughs) Okay. Job opportunities in the railroad construction in the United States drew way, 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 way more Irishmen across the Atlantic in the 1830s. So it was just like a common thing that people were coming on over to work on the railroads. Again, because they had to. This is where we take a turn, if it wasn't already bad, leaving your homeland to labor. Oh my god, just change your mindset. They were coming to the land of new opportunities. In 1832, cholera made its way to Philadelphia. Cholera, for those that don't want to know, is an infection of the small intestine. Oh no. The most common symptom is watery diarrhea that lasts for days. 
This can become so severe that within hours it can lead to dehydration, dehydration, <laughs> dehydration and electrolyte imbalance. And they didn't have Gatorade. And I'm sure working on the railroad, they did not have a lot of porta potties. No, they had holes. Other sim- oh. sim- symptoms consist of vomiting, muscle cramps, sunken eyes, cold skin, de- decreasing of your skin's elasticity, and then the skin actually turning like a bluish gray color. Just think of like you because you're so dehydrated because right. you're just shooting water out of your asshole. Oh, God. Does not sound like a fun time. No. Once exposed, you can begin experiencing symptoms within two hours, but they can wait Good up to Lord. five days to appear. Two hours? Isn't that wild? I thought that was like crazy. I think the variable of that's crazy. Two hours or five days. That means you could be like yeah. spreading it for five days and not even know. And not even know it. Oh, no. Yeah, it's it's just a wild range, but it's crazy because you think of that, but then also the effects that it had on people are also a really wide range. You know, just your body takes it differently. Some people were extremely sick for weeks. Some only had a couple days and some were kind of okay. It's just a big range of like when you get it and for how long and how bad. Yikes. Okay. The 1832 cholera epidemic was wild that August. There were over 100 cases daily being reported. August 6th and 7th alone resulted in 144th deaths. So August 6th, there were 176 cases and 71 deaths. And August 7th, there were 136 cases and 73 deaths reported. God, so that's like super fatal. It is. Was that your stomach? (laughs) This is such a chaotic episode. I love it. Okay. Six weeks after arriving, Duffy's entire crew was dead. Oh, even the original nine? The entire crew. How did Duffy fare? Unfortunately, their families would never know their fate. Oh, oh no. Because, you know, there's not mail. Yes, there there had to have been mail. How? It took them like three months to even You put it in a boat. Do you really think that these railroad workers are going to be like, oh my God, all these people died. Where did they all live? And they're actually going to do their due diligence to figure that out and mail off all of the stuff in 1832? Ugh. All right. Now, cut to Thanksgiving at Grandpa's where we're talking about these poor, unfortunate souls dancing on the very spot that they rested. For the boys, this wasn't that unusual to hear because like we said, the stories, they were told every Thanksgiving and stories of the railroad definitely weren't unusual. Because Grandpappy also worked for the railroad. He was a clerk, then a secretary, and then he actually became president of the railroad. So presumably that's how he figured out this tale, if we want to call it that, or truth of these ghosts in the first place. Gotcha. Okay, so now we're going to jump to September 2000. Bill was coming home from a Marine Corps reunion when him and a friend needed to take a rest. They stopped, they were kind of getting closer to home, and they stopped near Bill's university. And out on the lawn, through the fog, on that 10 p.m. afternoon, they saw shapes. And they looked like neon lights, but shapes of men. And then the shapes disappeared, and when the two of them went to go investigate, there was nothing found. And like I said, it was at 10 p.m., so he was like, there was no students on the campus, like there was nothing out there, like nobody would be waiting for somebody to happen to drive by to use the restroom. You know what I mean? Like, it's just to be playing a joke, at least. So kind of forgot about it. He went home and told his wife he's a little spooked, but that was that. All right. So just a short two years later, Frank was going through grandpa's files that had documents from the Pennsylvania Railroad Company. I think that would be so cool if you're, like, you know what I mean? So we going through all these old documents that, like, your Just, like, family member had. some historical stuff. Okay, real quick side note for everybody, because um, I had to look it up. The mail service started in the 1830s. It was called the Internet of the 1830s. So Okay, so we're right. two years in. I was saying you're probably right. They weren't doing it across the ocean. God, let me tell you you're <laughs> right before you interrupt me. Thank you! Okay, yes, back to Grandpa's historical files. Bringing in the nostalgia of simpler times of being a child, hearing historic and ghostly stories, while rummaging, one file stood out to Frank. The file read, History of Duffy's Cut, Stone Enclosure, East of Malvern, Pennsylvania, which marks the burial place of 57 track laborers who were victims of the cholera epidemic of 1832. 
Did they just like die at work and they just buried them right next to the railroad tracks? Mm hmm. Oh. Isn't that horrific? That's pretty sad. Do you feel the most powerful and beautiful with the elements of the earth around you? Do you like one of a kind jewelry? Do you sometimes feel like a woodland fairy? Me too. That's why I created Holly and Hemlock, a magical shop filled with handmade wooden jewelry and metaphysical tools. Come check out our enchanting wooden wares at www.hollyhemlock.com and join us in honoring the magic and beauty of nature with each unique creation. That's www.hollyhemlock.com. <sighs> right. In the file, there was like 22 different documents, and they kind of ranged from newspaper clippings, letters, etc. But one story caught Frank's attention because he remembered hearing it on that Thanksgiving back when he was 10. Now, Bill didn't remember his grandfather telling this story, but he couldn't help but feeling like it sounded really familiar. Remember, two years prior, he saw those light figures. So the brothers decided to look into this a little further. The uneasy feeling plus nostalgia for their grandpa, in addition to the very first page of the file reading, do not let this file get out of the office. It is not desired to let the file get out of the office, made the brothers turn into investigators. And to this I oh, say, how could you what not? The the second you find an old file that says do not do something i'm doing that something and it says it twice in one sentence like do not let this file get out of the office it is not desired to let this file get out of the office oh i desire that i want to know goosebumps so we're going through the newspaper articles and it was very much downplayed on the actual member number of the deaths it was reported in the paper only eight workers died at duffy's cut but the railroad company internal reports say the entire 57 died of cholera. Oh. So the newspaper articles say eight people on that, you know, crew. Is that because it was the eight original and they didn't talk about everyone they shipped in? Well, there was nine original, but I don't know. So that's kind of what they're like, what is going on here? This is so weird. Later, it was found that an article did report the number correctly like a news article, and another came out with a correction saying that that was mistaken and it was only eight. Lots of conflicting stories here. Well, and I think like the weirdest part is like, what does it matter? Like a pandemic, an epidemic hit. Like, Yeah, but from like a, I could see from a PR standpoint of the railroad and you're trying to attract I mean, more workers yeah. to and be like, oh, hey, 60 people died and we couldn't do anything mm -hmm. about it. Or like, oh, we only lost eight because we took safety seriously. Now, this is like we just kind of hit on. This is where it seems suspicious. Why do we have an 100% mortality rate of cholera? And you, I gave you the numbers. Like, yeah, they're high. But not everybody gets it the same way like I touched on earlier. Oh, so yeah. not everybody should be dying of it. Theoretically. Like, I, I get it. They can. Now, cholera is caused by poor sanitation, contaminated drinking water, or food. So I get it. They are in close proximity, things like that. And if they're all However, buried by the railroad, they probably have to bury their bodies as they drop. Right. But it's usually like cholera usually results in 50 to 60 percent death rate. Most people are OK. Not that that's any better. I'm not saying that. It's awful. And it was really rampant and crazy on that in that August, like I touched on. Yeah, but it does seem strange to have 100 percent mortality rate. So now let's turn up this investigation. With local support, the brothers were able to set up like a historical marker near the burial site in 2004. And they started using metal detectors and kind of digging into the earth because they're like, all right, we want to we want to see what's going on here. Like everything, like you said, there's conflicting things like it just doesn't seem right. And they're like, we want to look into this a little bit more. And like, so far, it's only their family that's seen the strangeness, right? No. So remember, Grandpa told the story of oh, the ghostly tales okay. back years ago. Yeah. Year, like in the 1800s this is when they were like 10 so this had been going on forever these people seeing these ghosts gotcha. presumably weird lights and ghosts so um in 2005 they found after you know doing this for a whole year like trying to dig and like whatever in 2005 they found an irish emblem on a pipe and this was basically their first evidence that they got and it did have like a stamp on it that said i want to say it was like dear um 
Deary, Ireland on that one, which made it like they're like, this is it. This is probably like their campsite or their little right. shanty site where they work so that they're like, oh, my God, this is good. We know now where to keep looking. So like I said, this kind of marked the work site and this was hope in hopes that they could find more evidence. After finding bones and then them turning out to be horse bones, it kind of starting to get hopeless. But in March 2009, remember we started this in 2004. Right. They just never gave up. Yep. So in March of 2009, snow and all, two students working on the site found a human tibia. And then came a full human body. They've like recruited others. It's not just the brothers. They have students out there. Yep. It was like the locals, like kind of made it like a historical mark. And then people were volunteering and it turned into like a big thing. Yeah. So they found that tibia and then it became, it was like a full human body. Yikes. With a body, this can be taken more seriously than just a passion project. And they needed to get this body, like the remains examined, obviously. Sadly... The remains belong to the youngest of the group, John Ruddy. He was 18 years old. You sure shot. That's impressive that they were able to identify who it was. And I, I can't remember how they ended up figuring it out, but what do you think was found in the anal- analyzation process? Of, of the bones? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my, my detective hat on. We have... Paul Holes. My Paul Holes hat. Okay, too many people died based on what the mortality rate should have been. Uh For some reason, when I asked you if Duffy was still alive, you didn't answer that. So I'm not trusting him. And I'm going (laughs) to go ahead and say that they didn't find any evidence of cholera. Well, it would have been kind of hard to find the evidence, I think, of cholera, per se, because it's bones. But what they did find was blunt force trauma to the head. See, I knew there was something shady going on. And I don't recall that being a symptom of cholera. Mm. No, I don't remember (laughs) you saying that either. So with more digging came six more bodies. All the bodies that they have heads for all have serious trauma to them. I like how you say all the ones they have heads for. So some are just completely headless. Yeah. Yeah. Uh Uh-oh. This isn't going where I thought it was going. Nah. So forensic evidence and the railroad files bring the brothers to a theory. August 1832, 57 workers are living next to the work site when cholera takes over. Individuals get sick and they're taken off the work line. If they died, they were just buried in the fill, you know, like the landfill that they're working from. Ooh. Okay, that makes sense. And I'm sure that that did happen. The railroad company declares a quarantine and no one is to leave. Seven workers try to escape anyway, most likely so that they, they themselves don't catch cholera. Or to get help. Okay. You got to figure, they're not getting any help, though, either. They're literally just told that they have to quarantine. Yeah, who's going to want to help them? But they're literally quarantining at a a, a shanty by a railroad that they're trying to build. Yeah, I'd probably run away, too. John Ruddy, the 18-year-old, five other men, and a woman named Catherine Burns are those escapees. The theory is that they go on, they're obviously malnourished, they don't speak English, they're stopped and beaten on the head to render them unconscious, and tied up before being murdered. Some even had bullet holes in their head, and others had axe wounds to the head. Can we stop for a second? Am I having a moment? Yeah. What do they speak? Because they're from Ireland. Gaelic. Most of them spoke Gaelic. Okay. They came from Ireland. They're not all... Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. That was... I was having a moment. Like, Irish people speak English. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I should have clarified. No, you're good. You're good. Okay, now the files say that they were simply brought back to the site after dying from cholera. So like I said, this theory is coming from the research that they did with forensics and all the files that they have access to. So there were escapees. They were just brought back. Oh. And then they died of cholera. Or I'm sorry, they were brought back after they died of cholera. However, they believe that they were carried back to the site in sealed coffins Because each coffin that they found these bodies in were closed with like over a hundred nails, which wasn't needed unless you don't want it to be opened and easily found like what was actually inside. Probably a bloody fucking mess. An epidemic. Like you're not going to be like, oh, I'm healthy. I'm going to go open this casket just to make sure because you're going to be afraid you're going to catch something. Exactly. So you could probably nail it with the normal however many nails, not 
a hundred or more. Yeah, but I feel like nobody's going to be opening. Nobody's probably second guessing the hundred. They're probably like, oh, just extra safety measure. Keep the cholera in. I don't know. I think that's kind of weird, but sure. I don't know. I think it's suspicious. So now what are you thinking? Because we went from family fun ghost stories to an epidemic to murder. They weren't with the 60 others when they were murdered is what we're assuming. Well, because they run, they they ran they away. Escaped. They came back, essentially murdered, but nobody knows it. Is it is there like a bandit camp nearby? <laughs> okay, I don't know. Question I'm not is, a detective. why would they be murdered? I'll tell you. Okay, the theory: low education leading to fear. Cholera was new to America. However, it had been spreading abroad, and Americans were consistently reading about it, killing hundreds. And we know what gossip does. XOXO gossip, girl. Oh, my God. I had to do it. Okay. Now, remember, our workers arrived in June, the same summer cholera started spreading. And like I said, Irish Catholics were considered the lowest of low. Right. Once again, blame the Irish. Right. (laughs) I'm sure you can see where this is going. Now, like mostly falsely accused scenarios, it's because there wasn't a bother to research. Okay. Okay. Yes, this group came from where they could have possibly been exposed, and it's a wild coincidence that it spread after they arrived. However, I don't think murder is where this journey should have went. If research had been done, it would have been known that they couldn't have been the deliverer of the disease because they were quarantined after arriving, and records show that no one was sick. So on the boats, they actually have a doctor, checks everybody out, They get off, no one's sick, they're quarantined, they're checked, then they can go to work. So they, like, if they had cholera, they definitely picked it up here. It's not like they brought it Correct. They would not have been allowed to get off the boat. Gotcha. So ignorance, but this is seemingly the motive. Now, who did the murder? (laughs) Bandits. I'm going with bandit camp. This is alleged, as we know, this is all just a theory, but pretty accurate based on all the files. The East Whiteland House, sorry, the East Whiteland Horse Company had property next to Duffy's Cut. They were a vigilante group as there was lack of law in the area and there was no sheriff. So they mostly um, punished horse thieves and found the horses. And that's kind of what they did. I thought at first you're going to say they mostly punished horse, punished, punished horses, horse. Ooh. P- punished horses. Horseradish. <laughs> wow, we're we're doing great today. I'm like, what what are horses getting arrested for? Chaotic. All right. So the thought is is that these were the people that stopped our seven escapees. Which makes sense, because if you found them right. probably on your property, they don't speak English and you know that they're mal- they're malnutrition and they Jesus Christ. <laughs> malnutrition. Malnourished. Thank you. <laughs> Whatever. In 2014, Bill got a call that made this theory more plausible. The caller claimed to be an ancestor of a member of the East Whiteland Horse Company. The individual stated that they knew that their relative had done something wrong and wanted to help and make it right. Apparently, there is a descendant society of this group, and they meet around the holidays. Which I think is so stupid. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. To you, East Whiteland Horse Company people. But this is stupid. (laughs) Uh, So the caller says that he wanted to, or I don't know if it was he actually, the caller wanted to convince them to open up their files and reports to prove this. So he wanted to go to this group of the ancestors of these wackadoo vigilantes that presumably only rescued horses from their thieves and just be like, hey, I know my ancestors, our ancestors did wrong. Can I have these files and reports and give them to Bill and Frank because they're trying to do right by these I don't trust murders? Them. Well, refusal was what they got because of a lawsuit from relatives of Duffy Cutts workers is the reason. So they didn't get the reports because this group was like, no, because we might get sued. But they didn't say that there was anything like murder or the railroad workers in the reports. They just claimed that they were sealed. Okay. Members only, which shush, bish. Yeah, y'all are. Uh, They're hiding something. 
a lame vigilante group from you don't, the 1830s. You don't seal records unless you're hiding something. <laughs> like, let's be for real, right? Like, Right. So we still don't have a clear murder suspect, but uh, they horse kind people. of do. <laughs> horse people. But the obvious and most alarming aspect is that the railroad covered up these murders. Maybe to cover up for those that did the murdering or kind of like you said, to not scare away cheap labor that they were receiving from travelers. I mean, which is probably both. Listen, if I was applying for a company and I realized they had like a ton of dead bodies on their hand, I would walk away. Yeah. The Watson brothers reburied the bodies that they had found, which actually turned out I'm pretty sure that they found more than just those six. Like they found multiple. Those were just ones that had ran away. And they had a ceremony, bagpipes and all. To lay everybody at rest. Judy Ruddy and Catherine Burns, their remains were sent to their homeland to be rested with their family members. We may never know the full truth, but cholera was not the final cause. Because cholera doesn't give you blunt force trauma to the head. Can cholera attack your brain? No, I don't think so. Then, yeah, I was going to say, no, no lines to be drawn there. Well, how would your skull get bashed in or have a bullet hole in it? Well, I'm saying like if it makes you go crazy, like I like I could attack you if cholera was in got my you, brain. Got you, got you, got you. Okay, I see your logic. I'm like, <laughs> oh my God. put your Paul Holes hat on, Kara. <laughs> and I'm Paul Holes. <laughs> That's oh my God. I'm sorry. That's my favorite thing when he says, "And I'm Paul Holes." Oh, uh, I know. I wish we could play it right now. We all know you're hot for holes. Hot for holes. And that is the wild ghost sightings that led to a full investigation and murder mystery. So the, the brothers, did they ever see the ghost themselves or was it just Gramps? No, remember Phil saw it on his way. He stopped at his college okay. to go to the bathroom. That's why when when Frank was reading through those files, Bill's like, I don't remember Grandpa telling us that story, but this sounds so weird and familiar. And he's like, holy Fuck, I saw that. Do people still see them? You know, I didn't really see anything about people still seeing them, but, you know, it's kind of solved now. So I think that these wonderful Irish young people were just dancing around on their graves. Like, you know what? Like, I'm here. (laughs) We might as well party and we're here. Like, somebody see us. Okay, so was it like an Irish jig or was it more of like a river dance? You know, I don't know because people said it. they just kind of saw them bouncing. (laughs) So it could be both. Okay. All right. They probably switch it up. Yeah. Depends on what holiday. Yeah. But I don't, I was looking up like Thanksgiving, like creepy things. And that ghost story popped up. And then as I started going through, I was like, holy shit, this is wild. Because a ghost story literally led to, I mean, I'm going to say they solved it. Like, let's get real. But I mean, they solved it as maybe not solved, but yeah, brought justice, not justice. What's, um, well, it kind of is just, here's the thing. We don't actually know who murdered, but we do know that like, Duffy obviously was covering this up. The whole railroad was covering it up. Like files, news reports were being lied to as to like how many were actually died of cholera. Like it it was like, no, no. So whether the railroad was the one that actually murdered them themselves or it was those vigilante horse people, it doesn't matter. Like I think justice was served in a way because at least maybe not justice to like the the offenders but yeah the the people who were like oh able yeah, yeah to yeah. get some closure i guess maybe they were bouncing up and down of like hey we're over here come find us that's what i'm thinking like we're we're gonna party a little bit because we have nothing else to do but we're also like come help us because this is fucking bullshit but i i just thought it was like a wild thing yeah i thought it was a crazy can you imagine being little 10 years old you hear this ghost story and then decades later, you're just like, you see it. Then you're going through your grandpa's files, like these un- like disclosed files that like no one's supposed to see. And you're like, wait, what? This was real? It's almost kind of like a calling. I know. Right? Isn't like, that so They appeared wild? to him because he had the ability. Maybe that's why Gramps had it too. Or like, you know, saw the reports or whatever. Because like, they're the ones who are kind of called to. Well, I think, it, yeah. And it's like it. crazy. I mean, obviously, Grandpa worked for the railroad, so that's probably why he was telling the story in the first place. But it's like, okay, so Grandpa worked for the railroad. That's so um, like a destiny thing, right? And then the boys loved hearing all these ghost stories and all the railroad stories and stuff like that. And Grandpa saved all the files. Like, why did he even have those? Could you imagine that? Grant? Yeah, I was going to say, I was just going to ask you that. Like, 
Grandpa's sitting on the answer to his own ghost story the whole time. Isn't that so cool? It is really cool. I thought it was, I mean, it's sad. It's really, it's really fucked up and sad, but I thought it was really cool. No, nice job. Especially on one I hadn't heard of before. I was kind of excited because I, I didn't think so. All our resources are always listed, but I did want to shout out the Ground Truth Project and their podcast, which is Ground, the Ground Truth Project podcast, because I got a lot of information there. And it was actually, they interviewed um, Brink, Bill one of them. And he recanted and told, it's actually, it's a really good listen. It's only like 20 something minutes, but um, I just want to shout them out because I got a lot of information from there. But yeah, I thought it was really cool. Give you a little bit of a Thanksgiving theme for the month of November. Mm-hmm. You know, I love murder. I know we're not murder, but I gave you ghosts. Hey, you got both. And I said, boop, boop. I guess I should say gobble, gobble, <laughs> gobble, gobble. Um, but yeah, so that's that. I'm sorry. This was so chaotic. We haven't, rec- I was going to say filled. We haven't recorded in a while, so we forgot how to do anything. Um, But please keep talking to us on social media, emailing us and all the fun things, liking, subscribing. And if you have a family uh, Thanksgiving ghost story or even fun traditions, yeah, write them in. A couple more episodes needed for another bonus or a couple more stories, not episodes. God. And um, yep, that's it. Again, happy belated birthday, Denise. We love you. uh, But most importantly, Creep it real, yardballs. Uh, goodbye. Bye.